Hello, Brazil. This is George Pettit of Alexis on Fire. You are listening to 89 FM, a radio rock. Fala, galera. Beleza? Eu sou o Enio Correia e hoje eu vou conversar com o George, o vocalista da banda Alex on Fire, atração do Lollapalooza Brasil 2022. Eles vão tocar no sábado, dia 26 de março. Um pouquinho antes vão tocar na áudio com a Date Remember, Lola Party lá na áudio, dia 24 de março, 89, vai estar lá também. É a rádio oficial do Lola Palusa. Eu vou conversar com ele sobre esses shows, né? Essa vinda na América do Sul do Alex on Fire, álbum novo que eles vão lançar em junho, chamado Otherness, tudo isso e muito mais com exclusividade para 89, a Rádio Rock. How are you, man? Ah, oh, I'm good. I'm very excited. Very, uh, little, little edgy, honestly. We're going, uh, this is the first tour in a very long time. Uh, maybe like two years post Pandy coming down to South America. I'm just like, I can't even fucking believe it. It's here. <laughs> <laughs> That was going to be my first question. And what did you do the last couple of years of, with lockdown, pandemic time? What did you do? Well, uh, I work as a, as a uh, full-time firefighter for the city of Oshawa. So I, 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 I mostly uh, did that. And then uh, hunkered down with my family and to make sure everybody was healthy and safe and all that stuff. So, uh, and then we secretly recorded an Alexis on Fire record. And I just kind of walked around with that in my back pocket for a while, which was, which was kind of nice. But, <clears throat> and that was, that was good because like through all of this like pandemic and weirdness and stuff like that, I knew that, I think, I think knowing that at some point Alexis on Fire was not only going to release an album, but play again. It, it really did give like that kind of light at the end of the tunnel feeling to this whole thing. Right. So yeah, no, this is, it's, I, I, I feel like it's going to be pretty emotional when we get down yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have the same feeling down here. Yeah. Yeah. And your hair is longer than before. Right. Yeah. I just stopped cutting my hair. I just, <laughs> I, I don't know. Just let it go, you know? And I'm, I like it now. It's a bit of a, It covers up some of the problem areas, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But that's great. It's a great hair. Thank you. And you've been in Brazil in 2012, if I'm not wrong. What do you remember from Brazil? I remember it being incredible. I remember we walked across, I remember we walked across uh, Sao Paulo to this restaurant where they had like a gigantic fig tree in it. And, uh, and it was a beautiful experience. And I remember the concert was about as wild of a concert as we have ever played. People coming over the barricade, they come to up, they'd be covered in blood, and they were, but everybody was just losing their minds. And there was this like, the crowd was so loud and so, uh, yeah, it was a legendary show. It was easily in the top five shows we have ever played. So I, I, hopefully we get to do that all over again. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to do two shows here in Sao Paulo with one with a day to remember and a small club in Olapalooza, a huge festival. Mm -hmm. uh, what can we expect from both concerts? Are you guys going to play the new songs, the old songs, everything? I think it's mostly, I think it's a, a bit of everything. We're going to, uh, we'll play, uh, we're not going to bore anyone with any of the songs that nobody's heard yet, I don't think, but, uh, but uh, we'll play uh, Sweet Dreams of Otherness and then the rest will be kind of like a, a grab bag of across all of our, our records. But uh, as far as what to expect is expect to get your, your, your hair blown back by Alexis on fire, man. I, I mean, like, imagine, you know, five wild caged animals that have been held down for two years by a global pandemic, just all at once releasing their, you know, uh, you know, like their pent up <laughs> whatever on stage. It's going to be, I think it's going to be a very cathartic event. So that sounds like something you might like. Come on down and see Alexis, see your old friends and Alexis on fire play. Yeah. And talking about the new album, Otherness, how was the process of writing and recording secretly, as you say? <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was, it was fun. Like, uh, I, before the pandemic, it was, it was very difficult for us to all be in the same city at the same time. We all had a lot going on and, And uh, getting together was, was complicated. And this kind of is the silver lining to it was that it brought us all to the same city so we could get together and rehearse. And there also wasn't any sort of like, because we weren't on a, 
a schedule of like, okay, well now we tour, now we write a record, now we write. This was just like wholly a creative venture. We could just make something that was for the sake of making it. And uh, it was one of the best, one of the most rewarding creative processes we've ever had. We we got together at a place called Jucasa for about maybe like 11 days and we just banged the record out. It was, and, and I'm really proud of it. I really think that it's, uh, it's the best thing we've ever done. And musically speaking, what is the difference from otherness than the, the other albums? I think we were a little bit more into self-editing ourselves uh, with the early records. We were, we were, we'd been kind of, we paid a lot of attention to our critics. We did, we were scared to kind of step outside of our genre in some ways. Uh, and, and now I think when we write, we're, we're a lot more free. You've got, you know, uh, I think, you know, Wade spending his time doing soundtracks and doing more cinematic things. I think that's kind of bled its way into the band a little bit. There's a lot more like, uh, uh, yeah, we're just like creatively. I, I think there's a lot more on the table. We've introduced this. Um, um, we have a new multi-instrumentalist that's kind of helped out on the record. His name's Matt Kelly. He'll be actually joining us in South America and joining us on stage. So that, that that's a new element uh, that we'll be using. And that we've kind of incorporated you know, organ and pedal steel and all sorts of different instruments into the way we play. Now, that being said, it's not going to, when you hear the record, I really don't think you're going to be like, this is way different from the old Alexis. I think the core elements of, of Alexis are still there. We're just, we're just finding new, new ways to present them. So here in South America, it's going to be six uh, KGD animals released, not, not only five, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Maddie, Maddie's also will also be released, I'm sure. Yeah. It's going to be his first show with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a much better musician than all of us, actually. So he, it won't require much. He's, he's, uh, he's very talented and very capable. So it's, it's been, it's been very, it was easy going into the studio with him. We'd never actually rehearsed with him before we got into the studio. And he just, he would fit in immediately. He knew exactly how to, um, you know, what to contribute and how much to do. And he took direction very well, but also like, wasn't afraid to, you know, um, voice his opinion. So it was, yeah, no, he's really welcome. It's a good locker room guy. And do you have a favorite track on the album? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I love otherness, the, the, the track that just came out, but I, I feel like mistaken information is a track that I, that I really love because if uh, I, 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 I actually sang on that, on that song and that's something that I've never really kind of done on an album before. So uh, it, it, there was a, it was kind of a magical moment in the studio where we realized that that was a possibility and, and um And so every time I hear that song, it kind of takes me back to there. So I, I'd say mistaken information. You sing more melodic of this song? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of more one of the more, yeah. Like I, I, in the past, we've, we've done more melodic songs that are kind of like slower, nicer songs. And sometimes it feels like you're kind of trying to shoo in. And now it's like I have like a, a new tool that I can use in, in the, for those sorts of songs, right? Like I'm capable of, you know, singing more melodically. So. Yeah, that's kind of, that's something that's new. How do you take care of her voice for, for tour or for singing? I don't. <laughs> that is I really the secret. Don't. I lost my, I lost my, I, honestly, I think it's magical thinking. I think it's just the belief that I can do it and I'll never lose my voice. And I, I, I think that that's what, what does it. I lost my voice maybe uh, the first year we were a band, we were on tour in the States. I, I flew home. I started doing all these things to preserve my voice. And then I went on tour with a band called Between the Buried and Me. And the singer would scream his guts out every night. He would drink a case of beer and smoke a pack of cigarettes. And I was just like, what is he doing that I'm not doing? And then all of a sudden, I just slowly started to kind of you know, focus in on, or, or just not worry about it as much. And, uh, and I've never lost it since. So, yeah. yeah. Like people say, Oh, you don't have to drink alcohol. Don't smoke. And then I say, I'd rather he drink wine during the shows. <laughs> and smoke. I say, Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Believe. I think it's just the belief that you can do it 
is is it, the second I start doubting myself, the second I'm like, oh, my voice doesn't feel so good. No, no, no. You have to. It requires like a certain degree of confidence, which gets harder and harder to maintain the older you get. But um, yeah, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it together. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I think my voice is as strong as it has ever been. So that's great, man. And why the, the song Sweet Dreams of Odin is that first single? It felt like the kind of mission statement of the record for us and like something that we all kind of liked. Like um, it, it, we thought it had like a good, um, like a cool chorus. It kind of features everyone. And it was enough of a, a change to kind of like be attention grabbing, but it still was very much us. So that was kind of, it made sense as a first single. And so that's kind of, yeah, why we picked it, I think. But yeah, I don't know. The sentiment seemed, seemed uh, I don't know, seemed timeless. So we, yeah, that was the one we all kind of found on. I think, I think we were all like, when, when it came time to pick a single, for whatever reason, even if like, I think our gut instinct was just every single one of us said, otherness, that'll be the first single, you know, Sweet Dreams of Otherness. So yeah. And that's also the reason, the name Otherness for the album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it was, uh, yeah, we uh, decided it was a strong enough statement that it should be our record, what the record is called. It's not necessarily like a, con con conceptually, it doesn't necessarily go through the entirety of the of the record, but it did feel like it goes through the entirety of our band, you know, like just being a little, uh, being somewhat of an outlier and being somewhat different is, uh, you know, something we all really relate to. And, um, and as a band, we've always been a little left of center and yeah. So that's kind of, and, or, or we attract people who are left of center, you know? So, yeah. And the first verse of the song is flash lit up the darkness of our time. When mm -hmm. did you guys write this? Because our time are living now, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was kind of, unfortunately, serendipitous with regards to that. We wrote this long, long before the skirmish in the Ukraine. Uh, that's going on right now I mean like we we're uh, it just kind of happened that that's you know the first line of the song completely reflects the current day so yeah no that that's not something we wrote you know knowing that Russia was going to invade the Ukraine yeah. and who is on the art cover of the album it's a face who is the that face she's the visual artist from from uh Uh, Los Angeles and Wade like liked her art and kind of like fetishist and she worked with other bands before though too and like so we got her to take some photographs and and um uh we kind of took these photographs and turned them into the artwork for the record um so yeah that was kind of it as far as the I forget the name of the model to tell you the truth unfortunately but all that information is on our website or on our, our Instagram I know that went up a little while ago uh it really kind of came together there but Wade kind of took the reins on on the artwork for the record this time around and and uh kind of spearheaded finding the art visual artist and then the visual artist found the 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 models to do it took photographs we sent it to a graphic designer and they kind of like put it together into um The, what it is right now. Do you want to send a message to our Brazilian fans? Of course. Brazil. My, my, our many Brazilian fans, we love you unconditionally. You are so wonderful and I cannot wait to get into a sweaty room with you so that uh, we can just blow each other's minds. That's great. Thank you so much for, for our time. Appreciate it. Looking forward to yeah, seeing no Brazil problem. finally. <laughs> Things are going back. Thanks so much yeah. for your time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Ronald. 89. A Rádio Rock.